How do you engrave on metal with a CO2 laser? Today, I'll show you some options to do just that. To start this off, I will say that a fiber laser is what is really ideal for engraving into metal instead of a CO2 laser, which is what I have. However, Thunder Laser does make a fiber laser that I've had my eye on for a while. So who knows, I may have one of those in the future. But if you have a CO2 laser like I have, you can still engrave, or maybe I should say mark on metal. Let me show you some examples. For example, this lighter, it's made from tin, but it does have a paint or a coating on it. And though our laser can't engrave down into the metal, it can engrave or burn off that coating. And that's what you see here. The coating burns off, revealing the bare metal underneath. By the way, we have an 80 watt machine and our settings for this is 250 millimeters per second at 30% power. The same principle goes for these PET ID tags. This is anodized aluminum. When you laser these, it takes off that anodized coloring and it reveals the aluminum below. The settings that we use for these are 500 millimeters per second and 20% power. Now, before I tell you how to do bare metal, let's talk about these tumblers. This is a Polar Camel brand tumbler, but the others like Yeti and Arctic pretty much all work the same. So these are stainless steel tumblers that have been powder coated with this red powder coating on it. And we use this with our rotary and our laser to engrave off the powder coating to reveal the stainless steel. And our settings for this type of tumbler is normally around 400 millimeters per second and 35% power. Now for the big one, bare metal. If you have something like this bare metal dog tag right here, and you try laser engraving it with a CO2 laser, just like it is, it won't do anything. It doesn't even mark on it. But there is something called a marking spray. We happen to have this Enduramark brand of marking spray, but there are other brands available. And I will say that these do come with a hefty little cost to this marking spray, so make sure and shop around, find the marking spray that you feel comfortable trying. To use this, make sure that you shake the can up very well. Then you wanna make sure that your metal is clean and free from oils. I use something like denatured alcohol to clean it up a bit. Then spray a light but even coat of the marking spray, at least on the area that you want to mark on. Now let this marking spray dry for a few minutes and be careful because it's really easy to rub that off uh, if you touch it and you don't wanna do that before you engrave it because then it won't work. And because of that, it's actually best if you will focus on your item before you ever spray it, or if you have an extra one of these blanks or something, then go ahead and focus on that instead of the piece that you have sprayed. Now you probably wanna do some testing for yourself, but what we found works good for this marking spray on bare metal is 300 millimeters per second and 60% power. Just make sure after you engrave it that you clean your item with soap and water to make sure you get all of the marking spray off. So this turned out really nice, and this doesn't rub off. What happens is a chemical reaction between the laser and the marking spray causes this to be somewhat of a permanent marking on here. To see how we engrave other stuff, click the playlist on the screen. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until next time, God bless.